We've traveled to Arkansas to Jess and Jeremiah's house to learn the art of hog butchering with the guys from Hand Hewn Farms. Yesterday we slaughtered one Mangalisa pig and today we're gonna butcher it and break it down. Hey baby, I like you carrying that half a hog. <laughs> Speaking, this is your Boston butt. This is your picnic. Um, Here's your loin and your belly primal. Your loin is going to be separated from your belly, and your belly is going to become bacon. Back here is your ham. But it's important to understand that this is not bacon, and this is not ham yet. This is pork, and this is pork belly. Okay. Only once this has been cured and or smoked is this ham. Only once this is cured and smoked is this bacon. Otherwise, it's just tasty pork. Fatty pork, uh, but it's not bacon yet. Pork chops are an exception. Pork chops are a fresh cut that you can just simply roast or fry. But if you pull the membrane off now, then it can all come off in one piece. Hmm. But the butcher will not do that for you? Uh, it's just, you know, depending on, your, depending on your butcher. You is know. that called really? silver skin or is silver skin something else? No, silver skin is going to be in between the muscles. Okay, there's no way we're going to get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it does look a little bit like bacon. It's pretty lean. Um, generally speaking, uh, especially on a, on a larger pig or a beef, uh, it's a really good muscle. It's very open grained muscle, and so it takes to marinating very well, which is why. It's typically used for like a fajita meat because fajitas are always going to be marinated and it takes the marinating very well. So that's a piece of skirt steak. Because that's not where you make your money on a Boston butt. You make mm. your money on your loin, your pork chops, and your bacon. Mm. So you want to make this cut as far north as possible. Mm. Some people count ribs. If you're a rib counter, you would start way up here. It's hard to see that first rib. It's usually buried underneath some of this other kind of sinew and there's a, actually the, the, the heart sat right here. Mm. Andy mentioned the lungs were here, but the heart sits right here in the front, perfectly protected by the sternum and the ribs all the way around. What led from the heart to the brain were the carotid and jugular arteries. So there's usually quite a bit of bloodshot stuff right here that we just trim away. Um, it's worth mentioning also, while we have half on the table, that when Andy's knife came in for the stick, he came in here and raked like this. Mm -hmm. And that's where the knife tip to the spine was cutting through those two, Arteries. the jugular and the carotid, correct. And when I make that cut, it's not intuitive, but I do not want to cut on contour or square to my rib. If I do, I'm going to be cutting right through the loin. Instead, I want to make sure I cut straight down to the table so that I'm not going to be filleting my loin. So you're going to treat this like fish. Boy, does that look nice. We're going to fillet it. So nice you get a hold of it here and cut down to the skin. Uh, uh, and right. then... Yeah. And it's usually... I don't speak too soon. But it's usually easier to skin things out this way. This is a pretty big chunk. Fatless as possible for the pork rind purpose. So yeah, or pig was just too after we are done boiling it, if there's if there's fat that we didn't get off, you can always scrape. It's, like, it's fascinating. It makes me feel like we could do it ourselves yeah. and do a really good job. Yeah. Even if we miss some things because we're learning so much. Do you miss your babies? I do miss my babies, but I know that they're being well taken care of. Have you all eaten any mangalisa yet? Just a little bit. Not that we raised. Not that you raised. Yeah, we had some of the Kayla's for the size. Very cool. Not that that wasn't good. I am more excited about eating it. Yeah. Once that gets really hot, you're going to set that guy in there on the backpack, and you're going to sear the backpack. In the process, you're going to be rendering out the fat that you're then going to lay the pork chop down in. Okay. Even if the pork chop had oil in it already, that is best. It's already seared. 
for the next level, dog. Wait till we get up the, the balsamic. <laughs> How are you feeling about that? Hungry? Yeah. How is it? If it's not the best Thank pork chop you. you've ever eaten, no? I need Thank to know you. a little bit more about your, your culinary history. Yeah. That'll do, pig. <laughs> I mean, that's really good. <laughs> I think I fried the first time I had a good pork chop. Hold the cutting board. Have you tried it yet? It's very good. Have you eaten some? Yes, amazing. It's delicious. The way the fat melts is different. So good. It is so different. It's pouring snow. They already had an ice storm the last couple of days. We're gonna go grab all of our stuff from our Airbnb and come back here and stay at Jess and Maya's for the rest of the workshop so that we are not stranded at the Airbnb and we don't miss the most important day of this workshop, which is the charcuterie day. <laughs> Steep part, hopefully we'll make it up this hill. If we make it up this hill, we'll be good. That snow's nice and good. Yeah, it's not a slick snow. We made it back. I know, we're gonna check our ligaments. I'm good, this zips way up. You're so cute. We are layered up too. Jess has a few different. Sorry. Whoa, that's okay. Jess has a few different breeds of goats. These are her La Manchas. If you've never seen them before, they can be different looking because they don't have external ears. So they can be just a little bit interesting looking. Um, but La Manchas are higher producing goats, and they give a very creamy milk. So a lot of people like them. They also have a very gentle disposition, and they tend to be not loud like Nubians and Nigerians can also be kind of loud so there's another breed for you guys to consider you've seen on my channel Nigerians, Nubians and Alpines and here's a whole new breed to look into this mama what's her name this is Winona 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 is expecting any day and the temperatures are super cold here right now I think they're getting down to I think zero Fahrenheit tonight. So we're just coming out to check her ligaments to see if she is close and um, to know whether or not she needs to be checked on tonight. She may not let me because she doesn't know me. It's okay, I can just wait for her to yeah. nibble and then I'll gently. Her udder is definitely getting bigger every day. Not massively so. So when I say we're assessing her ligaments, they're like two rods, basically. They feel kind of like pencils. When you feel just where the tail hits the body. And um, when they're gonna have babies, basically within the next 12 to 24 hours, those disappear totally. They'll feel soft and like bubble gum for a little while, depending on your goat. Sometimes it can happen all at once. Sometimes it'll happen over a few days. But um, this is just one way that you can really tell on a goat that, they are, that birth is imminent. You know, there are other signs, but those signs just tell you her body's getting ready. The ligaments really tell you that birth is coming. She's hard for me to tell because they don't feel like they're gumming up at all, but her udder's getting bigger. 
I mean, I do not lose at all. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're good, but that's good. Yeah, no, I'm definitely glad. I'd rather yeah, her not have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, by the end of the week, our highs are in the 40s. And yeah. so that would be great if she would wait. Okay. So we fill ligaments. They're very solid. I'm thinking no babies right now, which is actually awesome because it's very cold. Let's see. Hi. Come on. Jess has invited me to help milk one of her Lamanches. Her name is Anna. This will be fun. I don't think I've ever milked with Jess. So this will be really fun. I've also never had La Mancha milk um, just straight up. So I'm really looking forward to trying it because Jess has talked about how creamy it is. So I'm gonna be excited <laughs> to, <laughs> to compare to our Nubian milk and Nigerian milk and Alpine milk. They're so clean because everything's frozen. And yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? She's an easy milker. She's got real big teeth. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out which part to squeeze so I don't hurt her. There we go. There it goes. There it is. <laughs> oh. The king of the mountain. Queen of the mountain. There's so much fun. One of the joys about having friends that farm or homestead is that you can see their setups and from seeing their setups um, you can learn things you might want to change about your own farm. Specifically I love this little window she has in her milking stanchion where she can set things up there and then when she's heading back to the house she can grab them. And then um, another thing you can do is learn about other breeds. So I know nothing or I know very little about La Mancha's because I haven't actually ever had any. But because she has them, I get to learn through her. It's just a huge perk of friends with farms. So those will be baked as well? This can be baked as well. Okay. And um, it doesn't need to be huge. That's and then a too gentle much. fold, but Smaller. even when you fold, kind of stretch and, and, and fold. Yep, that's the way. That's all it takes. And then cut around. Well, that's just darling. <laughs> And in French, this is referred to as a clépinette. Oh, very nice. Because this is the clépine. It's about 10.50, and the final stages of this day are coming to a close. Pork has been cooked and am just amazingly seasoned, wrapped in beautiful call fat, and eaten. Riet, more on that tomorrow. Oh, man. I've never had this, never oh, man. seen it. Oh man. So excited. So goofy. That'll cook all night. Can you still the fridge? Beautiful. That will be essentially a canned meat covered well potted, potted meat. Potted it's meat. Confit. It confit potted meat. Covered in it's lard. It's Beautiful. The tools of butchery have been cleaned. The butchers are tired and ready to sleep. I am. Good night. Yep, going to bed. All right, it's done. We'll see you tomorrow. Charcuterie, cured meats, sausage. It'll be fun. Okay.